God's son. You are the whole. This one, let's sing together. To his hand, God's on changing hand. You are the whole to his hand, God's on changing hand. You all build your hopes on things eternal. Amen. Come on, give God some praise. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, choir, for and congregation for that opening hymn. We are thankful to be here in the house of God again, praising God with his people and having a, a wonderful time together. For the next hour or so that we're here together, we are looking forward to just whatever God has in store for us. Amen. So I'm just going to ask you to relax, sit back, and enjoy because God is allowed us to be in the presence of his Holy Spirit, and we just want to bask in it for just a little while. Amen. Amen. For those of you who may be, may be watching us on social media, who may be watching us on a delayed basis, we welcome you uh, into the Mount Moriah Missionary Baptist Church. We thank you for coming in and catching uh, uh, this part of this worship service. We thank you for being a part of us today. Amen. 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 We want to go keep on going forward today. I'm going to ask the choir to open us up with the opening hymn, and we'll go from there. Come on. Just want to praise him forever and ever and ever for all you've done for me. Great things and glory and honor, they all.
Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, choir, for that opening hymn, and thank those of you who were singing along right along with us. Amen? Amen. Amen. It's a beautiful day outside today. It's another day that the Lord has made. And even with all the stuff that's going on around this world, <laughs> it's still the day that the Lord has made. Amen. Amen? It just seems like so many things are happening in the lives of so many people. Yeah. It just seems like worldwide, and not only worldwide, but community-wide, statewide, right? Everywhere, it seems like something is one thing after the other is going on. But I want to encourage you today, my brothers and my sisters, God is still in control. Yeah. Even through the struggles, struggles and the troubles, he is still in control. And sometimes, I don't know about you, but sometimes when I'm right in the midst of my struggle, it's hard for me to sometimes remember that. You know, it's easier for me to have faith for your problems than it is for me to have faith for my problems sometimes. Because when it's my house on fire, I'm running and screaming. But when it's your house on fire, I can say, well, praise the Lord. Amen. You know, be, 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 have faith. God's going to fix it. But when, when I'm on fire, it's a little bit different sometimes. So, so sometimes we just need to have the word put into our ear that God's got this. I know I need to hear it. Uh, for, for the last week or more, uh, two weeks now, I know I needed to hear that as my wife and I were, were sick and not feeling well, couldn't be in church on Sunday, last Sunday. Uh, just had to keep reminding myself, God has got this. Amen? Amen. Let's get ready to go before the Lord in prayer. I, I want to say something as we get ready to pray. Uh, several weeks ago, uh, we had a, uh, just a visitor to walk into the house one day. Never seen him before, never heard of him before, and uh, came into the house and just started worshiping and praising with us. Y'all have seen this brother right here, this this brother over here, his name is, his, by the way, his name is Danny Hayward. Danny, Danny, uh, uh, let, me, let me say it this way. Danny, and that's from the last time I'm going to call you Danny, too, except, except, except when we're face-to-face, -face, when we're talking. Uh, uh, brother Hayward is an ordained minister. And we're going to have him come up and uh, we're going to have him come up and bring, take us to the Lord in prayer. I, I was talking to him the other day, and he said, uh, he said, uh, you know, I've got some sermons on YouTube. And uh, I went to YouTube, and sure enough, he's got some sermons. He's been preaching. He's, he's a preacher. He's a preacher. Amen. He's, uh, he, uh, as a matter of fact, I was talking to him, and he, he was brought up in a Baptist church, right? Amen. He brought up in a Baptist church. As a matter of fact, his his ordination was originally in the Baptist church. And uh, uh, through a series of events, he became a part of the Church of God in Christ. But more than anything else, he is a, uh, he is a minister. He's a beloved brother. And, and I will say this, too. I'm not going to go into detail. He's also a good cook. He's a chef. Amen. 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 He, I, I've eaten some of his food. Amen. He's a... Uh, he's, uh, he's, uh, for, he's with us in town here for just a little while, and we're going to sure to try to take advantage of his his calling, and also of uh, of his cooking. Amen, <laughs> amen. And his calling and his cooking. But uh, y'all y'all give this brother some love, brother Danny. Hey, would you come on up and have a seat with me, Minister? I I said that's the last time I'm going to call him Danny from now on. He's Minister Haywood. Hey, amen, amen. Amen, church. Amen, Amen again. Amen. Amen. So a lot of you have seen me, but um, not clear on what I'm doing down here. But um, I'm a field project manager for Walmart. And if you pass by the neighborhood market at Shug Jordan, all the commotion, the transformation of the store, that's what I go and do different Walmarts. So um, the last three months I was in Malvern, Arkansas, and I'm here for four months. And... Um, Next assignment might be Newman, Georgia, so I'm always traveling with Walmart. But um, through all that, I still try to find a church to go to, amen, I still try to give God the praise. And amen. It's not too often that I can sit out there, amen, and just sit back and absorb everything, amen, because a lot of places I go, people know me, and I'm always working, amen. amen. But I just thank God for my anointing, thank God for his 
spirit that's in me, and I just thank God for this church and this pastor. Amen. 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 So, um, man, I've been called to do the prayer, and I just want to ask everybody right now to just get that need on your mind. Amen. Just whatever you've been praying to God for, whatever you've been seeking, whatever you've been calling, whatever you've been crying about, amen, God knows it. Amen. And they say, let our petitions be known unto God. Amen. Yeah. But when the praises go up, the blessings come down. Amen. And I don't know about y'all, but I stand in need of a blessing right now. I stand in need of a, a praise right now. Amen. I just stand in need of a touch from God right now. Amen. Come on, get that need on your mind. Father God, we just thank you right now, Lord. Lord, for all that you've done, Lord, we just thank you right now, Lord. Lord, we know somebody somewhere didn't wake up this morning. Somebody somewhere didn't come home last night. But, Lord, those that are here today, <laughs> they ought to just say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for just giving me a little bit more strength, Lord. Thank you for just touching me, Lord, to see a brand new day that i never seen before. Father God, thank you that when I woke up this morning, my, my bed that I laid down wasn't my cooling board, Father God. Father God, I just thank you right now. And, Lord, I just ask you for a minute to just touch uh, this place right now, Lord, to just turn it around right now, Lord. Lord, it's not my mother, Lord. It's not my brother, not my father, nor my sister, Lord. But, Lord, it's me. <laughs> and I'm just standing in the need of prayer right now. And, Lord, I have made my petition known unto you, Lord. And, Lord, I just ask for a minute that you will just stretch out your hand and just touch me right now. And just touch us right now, Lord. Oh, we need you, Jesus. And we crying out before you, Lord. Somebody been sick this week. Somebody been in pain. Somebody been suffering, Lord. And that Lord, bills will do it. Don't know where the money going to come from. But, Lord, you said you'll be a doctor in the sick room. A lawyer in the courtroom. And, Lord, we need you like we never need you before. And, Lord, if you will, for a minute, just touch her right now, Lord. Just let your power rain down right now. Give us more faith, Lord. Give us more power, Lord. Uh, give us more strength to just go on, Lord. Yeah. Oh, Lord, when our burdens are, are burning us down, Lord, you said bring your cares and all your burdens to the altar and just leave them there. And, Lord, here we are just standing at the altar. Here we are, Lord, with just open arms, Lord. Actually, you just, Lord, to just do it again, Lord, to just take me back, Lord. To just take me back when I first met you, Lord. To just take me back when, when Lord, you just took everything away. Oh, we need you today. And, Lord, we just crying out to you. And, Lord, we just want to say thank you in advance. And I consider it done right now. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Praise God and praise God. Hallelujah. It's good to have another anointed minister of God in the house and pray. Pray. Now, Brother Danny, you're welcome if you care to join me. If you care to if you'll sit there, you're fine to whatever. I, I talked to Brother Brother Danny. Now, he was, I got to tell, tell this, he uh, 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 was here last week. On last week, his, uh, his, his bride was visiting. Because as he already told you, he's on the road a lot uh, with his work. But his bride was visiting from Arkansas, from Louisiana. And... Uh, I, uh, I said, well, my, I'm, I'm so glad, I'm, I'm so sorry I did not meet her. Now, I do hope that I get a chance to meet her again, because from what I understand, um, Sister Hayward can sing. And as a matter of fact, I said, I said, really? I said, can she sing well? He said, well, she sings well enough. She was on Sunday's Best. Um, if anybody's ever seen the BET program, Sunday's Best. She, she was on Sunday's best, so she can blow. I, I, I'm just looking for her the next time that she's here. But God bless you. Thank you, Minister Hayward, for being a part of Mount Moriah. And uh, we just, we love it for the time that you're here. And it's so, y'all, it's a blessing. Aside from it, it's a blessing that of all the churches uh, that are in Auburn, all the churches that this man of God could have gone to, and God led him to us here. And that, that is, that, that's a testament to us as a church. That's a testament that God felt led, uh, led him to come to worship with us. And I've seen him sitting on that front pew there just to clapping his hands and smiling and all kinds of things. And it's just that it's, it's a blessing. Amen. Amen. We're going to continue now. We're going to have our choir come back and bless us with another song.
Thank you, choir. I want to thank our musicians, too. Y'all give our musicians a hand. We got Latoya on the pearly white keys. We got Anthony. Anthony. Am I saying it right? Anthony on the drums. Amen. Amen. We're thankful. We're thankful that God has blessed us. But not only are they serving today, but we have wonderful ushers who are in the back. Amen. God bless them. Amen. Amen. Again, I, I want to, uh, I want to, to, uh, to say again how thankful I am to be uh, just a part of Mount Moriah, first of all, and this worship service in particular. Uh, it's just that uh, it's a blessing just to be here today. Amen. We have others that are also, also very faithful in doing the things that God has called them to do uh, here in the church. Amen. Amen. What's that? What's that song? Right. Go ahead. Come on, let's, let's, let's sing that. Come on, this is everybody knows this. Come on. I, I feel a need. Hold, hold on one second. But just go ahead. I, I feel a need in this place right now to, to just ask God to release his spirit. It, I, I feel spiritually that, that, that the enemy has trying to restrict our worship. I, I feel a, a restriction of our worship. So, the, 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 for future reference and this reference, let me, let me tell you, any time in your life, whether you're alone or in a worship service and you, you feel a restriction of the spirit, let me give you the remedy. The remedy is worship. Worship. If you'll stop and begin to worship God. You see, the enemy, the enemy can't fight that. So now, for just a few moments, we've all heard this song from the time we were little children even into this day. Let's worship God with this beautiful hymn of the church, Amazing Grace. Come on, just, just worship him. Amazing Grace, everyone. In the name of Jesus, I loose the presence of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, have your way. Release the restrictions. We worship you, O oh God. We worship you. We bless your holy name. We worship you, O oh God. We worship you, Lord. Just worship him. Father, release your spirit in this house today. Take away the restrictions, Lord. Let's, let's quiet for just a moment. Play, play. Just worship him now. We worship you, O oh God. We bless your name, O oh God. We honor you. We, we bless your holy name. We thank you for your amazing grace. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Blessed be the Lamb of God. Blessed. Feel, feel that restriction leaving now. I, I feel it opening up now. I, I feel it opening up. I flow. I feel the flow. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah. Rain on us, Holy Spirit. Bless you, O oh God. One more time, amazing grace. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for freeing the Spirit here. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Now move freely among us. Move freely in our, in our midst, Holy Spirit. We give you freedom. We invite you. Move freely among us.
Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Bless the Lord. told you time and time and time again, I, almost every Sunday, I, I always suggest to you that part of your prayer should be to ask God to allow you to be sensitive to what the Holy Spirit is doing. Sensitive to his presence, sensitive to his work. I, 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 I sense the restriction spiritually. God has removed that now. God has moved it. That, and that's what I mean, being sensitive to what is going on spiritually around you. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Thank you. Now, let's give God some praise in the house. <laughs> give me that again. I like that. I like that. Okay, okay, wait, 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 wait a minute. I'm the pastor. I'm gonna ask her one more time. Come on. Amen. All right. All right. I got it now. Amen. Amen. God bless you. We want. I want to share a couple of announcements with you, and uh, then the choir is going to sing again, and I'm going to bring a. Uh, a message, a, a, a short message today. Um, most of you know uh, that my bride and I uh, were we were sick on last week. We were not able to be in in out in, in in church, but we were sick for several days. Uh, both of us had contacted COVID, and we were quarantined. Our doctors under our doctor's care. We were we were. We were trapped in our house. Amen. Doctor said, don't leave the house. Don't do nothing. Just stay and be quarantined. Now, first of all, I want to thank each and every one of you for your prayers. Uh, those of you who prayed for us, uh, even before you knew it, uh, that, that we weren't going to be in church. You maybe had heard that we were sick, and uh, you prayed for us. So I want to, first of all, thank you for all the prayers that my wife and I uh, uh, that you re that you gave me and my family, uh, and we are thankful for that. Uh, I want to thank you for the phone calls. I've got several phone calls. I want to thank you for the text messages. Some of you texted me. I want to thank you, especially those of you. Now, I had a number of people offer. Since we could not leave home, we couldn't uh, go to the grocery store, we couldn't, you know, go get anything that to, to eat, um, outside of the house, we had several people call and offer uh, to, um, to, uh, to bring us food by, to go grocery shopping for us. That's what God's people ought to do. And, and I especially want to bring, now we didn't take everybody up on the offer, but for those of you who did bring us food by, for those of you who did come, people came and just left it at the door. They're here. And we'd go after, we, I was watching the window when people would leave out the driveway, I'd go out and get it off to bring it inside. Uh, but that's what God's people ought to do. But I want to thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your phone calls. And on behalf of my bride and my family, uh, because uh, not only that, that my bride and I uh, have COVID, our, our son, Jabez, who's here with us today, he was with us. Uh, and he uh, he also contacted COVID, and we, but now we're we're all negative now. We we tested negative. Amen. Give God some praise. We've uh, we've, we've tested negative, and uh, and we're good to go. Amen. I, and I want to thank you for those of you who were here last week, and uh, 
Minister Davis came and preached in our stead. I was watching on television and uh, watching on my computer, rather, and we, uh, we were blessed. So I just want to I wanted to start by saying thank you to the Mount Moriah Church family. Amen. Also, uh, I, want to, uh, I want to mention to you, we are in the process. Some of you may have noticed you know, that we have uh, a, a few different things. We've, we've got our monitors uh, uh, behind me and one in front of me. We've got them sort of working. We're getting there. Uh, you may have noticed that we've got different camera angles now. We've got a new... A camera posted on the on the wall here, plus the camera in the back, and now we have different side, uh, different angles that we can watch, watch the uh, uh, that we can stream from. Now, there's a whole lot more that goes with this system. We have, we uh, we are on, we're what you're seeing today is only the tip of the iceberg. We're going. We've got to be. We're being trained on this system. The uh, installer was here on yesterday, and he's going to be coming back. And I'm, saying, I'm leading up to this. If you or someone you know would like to be trained on operating this audiovisual system, this media system, we need your help. We do. Now, we've got uh, Brother Tamarcus is back there, and Brother Jaden is back there, and they were here on yesterday, but we need others. Uh, well, don't, amen. And I know, I, I know that maybe uh, some of us older folk may not feel comfortable doing it, but if you know some younger folk that do, we invited several people, and you know, different uh, different uh, things came up, and they weren't able to be here on yesterday. But I want you to know that we have some wonderful, wonderful things ahead. And if you have been used to watching uh, us from time to time on Facebook or YouTube, you're going to notice a difference too. And we've got at the at the at the at the bottom of the page, we've got streaming. We we've got messages that can stream across. Um, um, uh, for as far as announcements, as far as the, any, any, anything that we want the public to know, whether it's in having to do with giving or whatever, there's a whole lot that we can do. But we do need volunteers. So if you know someone or you feel comfortable just wanting to learn, um, it's not terribly uh, difficult, but we just need your help. Amen? Amen. Finally, I do add in, in I, uh, I seek your prayers on one other thing. On, uh, at a at 3:30 this afternoon, I'm going to be in Atlanta, and I'm going to be flying uh, and spending the week in Dallas, Texas. I'm going to a pastors and preachers conference in Texas. Uh, I'll be there the entire week. I need your prayers for safe travel. I need your prayers for safety uh, to come uh, for there and back. Uh, the purpose of this uh, convention of this conference that I'm going to is hopefully that I can become a better preacher. Hopefully that I can become a better pastor. Hopefully that Mount Moriah will benefit from uh, my learning and from my uh, involvement with, um, with, uh, with this particular conference. And I, most of you know I do go on an annual basis, and I'm so looking forward to it. So we're going to have a my, – my plane takes off at 3.30 this afternoon, so we won't be here a whole lot longer. Amen. Somebody said amen. 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 Huh? Amen. 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 Let's bring the choir back and we'll have another song. And uh, then we'll have a. Huh? Yes. Oh, oh, man. All right. Amen. Happy birthday.
Amen. Amen. Pray. Pray with me. Father God, we, are, we acknowledge that you are our strength. You are our help. Your very present help. Lord, we thank you now for this preaching opportunity. We thank you, O oh God, that you've given us the, the awesome privilege of sharing your word with your people. Now, Father, help me to make you look good. Move me back. Holy Spirit, take control. I ask you to prepare the hearts, the minds, and especially the spirits of those that will hear, whether they're in this sanctuary or watching us online. Prepare our hearts, our minds, our spirits, that the word might fall on good ground and bring forth much fruit as you see fit. It's on the authority of our Christ and his name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Wonderful. Wonderful. Amen. That's a praise report. Yeah. Yeah. That's a praise report. There. I, 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 if I had more time, I'd park there for a while. Because I've got some things I can say about that. Uh, amen. For a, uh, a brief moment th today, and part of the reason is not just because I'm got to get to the airport, but part of the reason I'm brief today is that uh, although my wife and I are testing negative, I'm, I'm not 100% full strength yet. I'm, I'm still, my strength is still building up. Huh? Yeah, it, it takes a minute. It, I, I only know if you've had COVID or not, but if you have, it, 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 it packs a punch. And it takes takes a bit to, to build up strength, my strength. So I'm just going to kind of talk to you a little bit today, okay? I'm going to talk to you, I promise you. Brother Reese, I promise. <laughs> Mark chapter 5. Very familiar passage of Scripture, one that we've all heard uh, time and time and time again. My wife and I were talking about this passage of Scripture just the other day, excuse me, make that Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4. And God laid this upon my heart. It reminded me of something that happened just a couple of weeks ago. <clears throat> and God wanted me to just share it with someone. Because someone may be listening. You, you may not need to hear this message today. But as you've heard me say often, if if you hear a message, uh, a gospel message, and if it does not immediately apply to your present situation, put it in your spiritual file cabinet so that you can retrieve it at the time that's necessary. And this is a message that you keep in your file cabinet. Because I, I doubt if anybody in the house today, if this will be a very a present situation, but, but it's a message that you're going to need. Mark chapter 4. I'm reading from the King James Version, very familiar passage of Scripture, beginning at verse 35. And the same day, when evening was come, he said to them, let us pass over to the other side. When they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship, and there was also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm. Let that sink in. There arose a great storm. And the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow, and they woke him and said, Master, 
Perish thou not that we perish. He arose and rebuked the wind, and he said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly, and they said to one another, What manner of man is this? That even the wind and the sea obey him. About two weeks ago, three weeks now, three weeks ago, a very close friend of mine passed suddenly. We have been friends for probably some 30 years. I'd had the privilege of performing the wedding ceremony of him and his his wife, his wife, he and his wife had named me the godfather of their young daughter, very close friend of mine. He was a very active man. He was uh, very muscular. He's a former athlete, former army ranger. He used to jump out of airplanes parachutes when he was in the military. He, he looked like a linebacker. I used to tell him, I said, uh, man, if I ever get in a fight, I'm on your side. <laughs> he was very active. But suddenly, without warning, suddenly, with no anticipation, he told his wife that his back was hurting him just suddenly started hurting. She told him to go to the doctor, but you know how many times, especially men, we might wait and put it off and put it off. A few days went by and his, she told him, he told her that his stomach was starting to hurt him also. To cut to the chase, he went to the doctor. Here was a man that was a very active, working every day. He was 62 years old younger than me, but suddenly, out of the blue, something that was unexpected, something that was unwelcome, suddenly came into his life. He died three weeks after he was diagnosed. Three weeks. He had gone to work the day before his diagnosis. He had gone to work. And his wife went with him to the doctor, and the doctor came back in and said, do you have pancreatic cancer, and it has metastasized throughout your entire body. With no expectation, suddenly, his life changed. Suddenly. The doctor told him, I think you have anywhere from six months to maybe a year. He died three weeks later. Suddenly. That's what I want to talk to you about today in this subject. Suddenly. Unexpectedly. Unwelcomed. Uninvited. Things happen in our lives suddenly that can change our lives forevermore. In this text, Jesus had been teaching and preaching with his disciples. He had been doing all the things that he did as, a, as our Savior. And he told his disciples at the end of the day, let's go over to the other side. He was speaking of this lake, what we call the Sea of Galilee. Jesus said, let's get in the ship and go to the other side. And if you know the story, the story is that all the disciples got in the ship. A great day of ministry. They've been to church. They've been preaching. They've been teaching. They've been healing. 
They all got in the ship, and Jesus got in the ship and went to sleep. The word says that he went to the hinder part, the back of the ship, and started taking a nap. And suddenly, a storm came. Out of nowhere. I can imagine that when they got on the boat, the sun was shining. I can imagine that when they got on the boat, the wind was not even blowing. I can imagine that when they got in the ship, the sea, the lake was calm. But suddenly, when you got up this morning, the sun was shining. When you got up this morning, the torrential winds of your life were not blowing. When you got up this morning, the waves of the, of the world were not crashing against your front door. But I want to remind you something, my brothers and sisters. It can happen suddenly. There's no guarantee against the sudden. There's no guarantee that the next hour of your life won't be changed forever. There's no guarantee. There's no guarantee that something life-changing will not happen to you, your children, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren. Suddenly. At the funeral, my, my friend's wife kept telling him she was crying. It was one of those funerals where they had to carry him out. It was a very, very sad funeral. And she kept saying, this was not supposed to happen. We had plans. She said that at the funeral. It, looking at him in the casket, she said, this was not supposed to happen. We had plans. And they did have plans until life suddenly changed. But I want you to know something about the suddenlies of life. It may appear sometimes that when you're going through the sudden storms that God's not doing anything. You see, in the story that I read, Jesus was asleep. It appeared that Jesus wasn't doing anything. The disciples were struggling against the wind, against the waves, against the sea. The disciples were struggling against that thing that happened suddenly and Jesus was asleep. Have you ever been in a situation where something went, was going beyond your control and it appeared like God wasn't doing anything about it? It appeared like God wasn't healing your body. He wasn't making your children act right. He wasn't making your loved one uh, uh, act right. He wasn't helping you pay your bills because you were struggling through that thing that happened suddenly. These were experienced fishermen. You see, if the storms that they encountered, if they had known it was coming, they wouldn't have gone. If they, they, if they could have seen the storm ahead of time, they would have said, well, 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 we don't need to get out on the lake now because there's a storm coming. Let me give you a weather report. There's a storm coming in your life. There's a storm coming in the life of every individual in this room. There's a storm that's on the horizon for all of us. All of us, at some point in time, we're going to experience bereavement for the, of those we love. We're going to experience pain in our bodies. We're going to experience the loss of a loved one. Weather report, there's a storm in all of our lives ahead of us. And sometimes it feels like God doesn't do anything. And sometimes it falls upon us to want to know why. Because that's what the disciples did. The disciples, the, the Bible says that the disciples looked at, uh, at Jesus and said, don't you care? Carest thy not that we perish? How can you, how can you lay there asleep we're in a storm, and sometimes when you're in a storm, the storms of life that you're going through, the ones you did not invite, the ones that were unwelcome, the ones you did not expect, when you're going through that storm, you want to ask God why. I pay my tithes, I go to church, I don't bother nobody, why? 
is this happening to me? Why did I have that diagnosis? Why? 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 Well, although this, the sudden storms will come in our lives, there are some things that you can be certain of. The first thing you can be certain of is that Jesus hears your cry. Remember that Jesus did not hear the howling storm. The storm did not wake Jesus up. The lightning did not wake Jesus up. The wind did not wake Jesus. Jesus was sleeping through the storm. He was sleeping through the storm. You know what woke Jesus up? The cries of his disciples. He hears the cries of his children in the midst of the storm. You see, Jesus didn't get upset with what was going on. Jesus was moved by the cries of his disciples. That's what caused him to wake up. You can be certain that he hears your cry. I've cried out to him on occasion for one thing or the other. And sometimes I wonder, Lord, are you listening to me? And if you be honest, you can be there too. Lord, are you, are you hearing me? Are you listening? I can promise you, my friends, that he hears your cry. And no matter what else is going on, the cries of his children, that gets his attention. Well, you can be certain of that. There's another thing you can be certain of, that no matter what sudden storm that comes in your life, that storms don't last forever. They don't last forever. Storms always pass over. If you can stay faithful in the storm, if you can stay faithful through uh, the winds of life coming against you, through the thunders of life coming again, if you can stay faithful in those things, in those things that happen suddenly, if you can stay faithful, the storm will eventually pass. And then finally, there's a word I want you to remember, and that word is sovereign. The word sovereign, when, it, when it's applied toward uh, anything, Anyone or anything that is sovereign has no authority over it. When we speak of God being a sovereign God, it means he can do what he wants to, when he wants to, however he wants to, whenever he wants to. This is what I want you to take home with you, my beloved, that when the sudden storms of life come against you, that God is the sovereign of the sudden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can, talk, you can talk on that. Jesus is sovereign over the sudden storms in your life. It may be this afternoon. It may be a week from now. It may be a year from now. If you're very young, it may be 50 years from now, but there will be a sudden storm in each of our lives. But when you're in the midst of the storm, cry out to him. He hears you and he will answer. There's a story I often hear. I'm, I'm going to rush on, but a preacher told the story years ago. He had He'd gone out of town to preach a revival and he had left his wife and small child at home. On his way back home, he realized when he, when he got home, he had ridden with someone else and the other person that he had ridden with had dropped him off. He realized that he had left his house key. He didn't have a key to get into his own home. So he knew his wife was at home and he knew his wife and their small child was at home. Some, I've told this story before. So as he got home, he rang the doorbell, and there was no answer. He said to himself, I know my wife's home. He rang the doorbell again. There was no answer. He knocked on the door. There was no answer. He went and peeked through the little side glass of the door, and he could see, laying on the couch, his wife taking a nap. He rang the doorbell again. 
and there was no answer. So as he was peeping through the window, he saw his wife suddenly jump up off the couch and run into one of the back bedrooms. So as she came back into the living room with the baby in her arms, he knocked on the door and she came and opened. He said, I've been out here ringing this bell, knocking on this door, and it didn't wake you up. She said, I didn't hear you, baby. I'm sorry. He said, but I saw you get up. She said, but I heard the baby cry. She said, I got up because I heard the baby cry. You see, we're his children, y'all. He'll hear our cry over the storm. He'll hear our cry over the sudden things that happen. You know why? Because remember these words. He is sovereign over the sudden. Three weeks ago, my friend's wife asked me to preach his eulogy. I preached this sermon at his eulogy. This is the sermon I wanted her to know and I wanted his do- their daughter to know that this happened. I know you're tired of hearing me say it, but I want you to I want this to be steered in your I mean be branded on your mind. It happened suddenly. But Jesus is sovereign over the sudden. Reverend James Cleveland said it this way. I wish I could sing it. Master, the tempest is raging. Oh, the billows are tossing high. Doesn't it feel that way in your life sometimes? The sky is all shadowed with darkness. Oh, no shelter or help is nigh. Carest thou not that we perish? How can you lie asleep when each moment so madly is threatening a grave, a grave in the angry deep? Sometimes you have to say, get up, Jesus. Because the winds and the waves of your life, they'll obey him. And he He will say, in the midst of your sudden storms, peace, be still. God bless you. God bless you. That's my message today. He is sovereign over the sudden. Pray with me. Father God. I I lift up this word to you today. When we find out, Lord God, that you, even when your disciples were in the storm, you were always there with them. You were right with them. And Lord, remind us that when we go through our sudden storms, that you're right there with us. That you're sovereign over the sudden. Father, if there's someone who does not know you as Savior, we open the doors of the church now, Lord, and we ask that that you would bring them into a relationship with you. If they're looking for a church home, Lord, we ask that you would reunite them with us here at Mount Moriah. If there's someone, Lord, who has strayed away and does not know you, in a close relationship, I, draw, I pray that you would draw them closer to you, Lord. Lord, we love you today. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you that you're sovereign over the sudden. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. 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 Whether you're in the sanctuary today or you're watching online, if you're looking for a church home, we invite you to come and be a part of Mount Moriah. If you're watching us online and you don't have a church home, 
you can contact us. You can call, call the church. You can go to our website. On the front page, home page of our website, uh, there is an opportunity to send in prayer requests. They come directly to my inbox. I'll be happy to call you back and pray with you and show you how you can become a member of Mount Moriah even if you're not in the sanctuary or even if you're not even in our city or in our state you can still be a member of Mount Moriah we love you we thank you and I hope that the words today put it in your spiritual file cabinet you're going to need it God bless you God bless you amen amen and amen all right. today that if they do not know you in the free pardon of their sin if they do not know you Lord God as personal Savior I pray God that you would draw them to you I pray God that you would draw them to Mount Moriah that you draw them to me and then allow us to pray with them and allow us to lead them uh, in a working in a right relationship with God Lord I thank you for those who are faithful in their giving and faithful in their tithes. I pray, God, that you would bless the offerings that have been given today. I pray, God, that you'd bless those who have been freely from their heart giving, being obedient to the word. Now unto him who's able to keep you from falling, to present you faultless before his presence with exceeding joy, to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, honor, power, and dominion, both now and forever. God has spoken, the church say amen. God bless you. Please keep me in your prayers this week.